In this video, we're going to learn about aligning geometry normal to a curved surface. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video we're going to do something a little bit different. I had an email come in, somebody asking a question about aligning geometry normal to a curved surface. So I have a very basic solid body here that you can download from the description in the video. This is basically just a sketch revolve that has a ring profile on it. There are a few important topics that I want to talk about, different ways in which we can create geometry normal to a curved surface, and different ways in which we can split up faces or bodies and actually get the normal position, uh, hopefully at any point on a curved surface. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to talk about this revolve and the plane that it was drawn on. So this is just a pure arc and the arc is centered on the axis, in this case the x-axis. So this point here is the center of that arc and this point here is the center of revolution. So we have the curve in two directions, which means if we create something uh, in this plane, at any point, we can get the normal simply based on the fact that we have the center of this arc. Now, that's not always the case if it's not a true arc, if it's a spline or, or some sort of different curvature, but we're going to at least take this first look at a basic curve. The second thing is if we're going along the axis of revolution, which is around the y-axis, we can use this as the center point at any specific point in time. Now that means that we have the normal direction for two specific instances. But what happens if it's not on this plane and if it's not about the axis of revolution directly in the x z plane? Well, that's the case where it gets a little bit trickier and we have to use some different tricks to get the geometry just right. So we're gonna look at a handful of tools. We're gonna to look at move copy, we're gonna look at align, we're gonna look at splitting this up. So let's take a look at the first basic example. I wanna start by creating a sketch and it looks like something was already selected. So let's uh, undo that and let's create a sketch. And I wanna make sure that I'm on the right plane so that way I have access to the sketch here. We're gonna use a handful of tools. We're gonna to do circle, I'm gonna place another one over here. I'm gonna place one over here. And then we're gonna use line. I'm gonna go vertically, and I'm gonna go out to this point. I'm gonna hit escape, and then I'm gonna place a horizontal constraint between the center point uh, or the origin and the center point of the circle. And then I wanna hit escape, and I'm gonna turn everything here into construction. I don't need it for this example. And then I wanna add a dimension between here and here, and we're gonna do 45 degrees. So uh, if anything is selected, if there are points selected, you'll need to undo that. And then you wanna make sure that you go between this line and this line, and we'll add 45 degrees. I know this is kinda of hard to see, but I'm also gonna add a handful of dimensions here. Gonna make this one relatively small at five millimeters, and we'll make this one here eight millimeters. So, when we're talking about jewelry, these are going to be the posts that would hold a gem in. Uh, typically, you'll see them probably soldered on. I don't make jewelry, so I don't know specifically, but uh, a lot of times you'll see these, these sort of small posts or gems to hold the gems in. So that's, that's what we're trying to replicate in this specific instance. So now that we have a handful of references, let us talk about creating a circular pattern. So we want to come down. This is gonna be our point that we're replicating and it's gonna go about the origin. We're gonna put four instances. We're probably not gonna use all of this, but it's, it's good to have a complete picture of the references. Now, one thing that is kind of frustrating about the way that Fusion 360 deals with projected references is we have to create another sketch. Doesn't matter what sketch plane we pick, but we need to create another sketch in order to go to project include and to project to surface. We're going to project it to the outside of the ring. We're going to select a handful of points. We're just going to push all of these up. And the projection type is going to be a long vector, and we'll just select the x-axis, and we'll say OK. Now we have a sketch that has those projections. You can see all those different points, this purple or pink points, depending on your monitor. Uh, you can see all of those on the surface. Now, this one here 
is the one that was horizontal to the origin. Now, this is the one that we can 100% accurately say without a doubt that we can get normal to that. These are the ones that are tricky. So in order to get normal to that, what we want to do is we want to go to construct and create an axis through two points. We can go through the center point of that arc, the point on our surface, and now we have an axis that gives us the normal direction. This could have been done with a sketch line, but sometimes when you're dealing with a geometry like this, creating an axis is the best way. So now if we have a create and a cylinder, this is just a primitive cylinder, we'll draw it on any of the planes, it doesn't really matter. If we wanna take this and we wanna push it up to this surface, we can do that a couple different ways. Now, it's important to note that not all tools are made equal, and some of them work better for certain situations than other. So, for example, modify, we have move copy, and we have align. Move copy does a great job of moving this to the right position. Align does a great job of letting us align the cylinder to this axis. However, for the references that we have, we're going to have to use a combination of both of them. So, I'm going to start with move copy. I'm going to set this to bodies. And the move type is going to be point to point. First, I need to select the body, so that'll be our cylinder. The origin point will be on the center of this bottom face, and the target point is going to be this one on our surface. I'm going to create a copy so I still have that cylinder down there. And now you can see that it's at the right location. However, it's not at the correct orientation. So if we use a line, bodies again, we're going to hover over the cylinder, and I'm going to hold down Control Command if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to select that bottom point. Now, notice as I move, the dialog or the icon that we see on the screen, this is actually representing the orientation. That's going to be important to understand. It's going to represent the orientation for the normal direction. So we'll select that. And when we hover over the axis, this is going to be our second selection. Now, as soon as we do that, it sets the cylinder Based on that point, it didn't move it, it just simply rotated around that point, which we already used move copy to position, and it aligned the rest of it to that. So now if we had to move it down into the body for some reason, we could use move copy, and we could just set a free move. Now free move will automatically, if we select the cylinder, or even if we select this end face, will allow us to move normal to that direction. So this is a great way for us to position it a certain amount down into the rest of the ring. Now, if we want to remove it or join it together, whatever the case might be, now we have that. The next thing that we want to talk about is, is kind of how we get to these sort of awkward positions. Now, in order to do that, I am going to create another reference. Now, I'm going to do this by hiding this, and I'm going to just create a new sketch. I'm going to use a, actually a different orientation. We're going to use the top plane this time. We're going to create a circle. This is going to be snapped to the origin, and we're going to give it a dimension value, even though we don't really need it. I'm going to set it at 15 millimeters, and then we're going to finish the sketch. Now I want to take this using split face. I'm going to split the outside face of the ring. I'm going to use this as my split. We're going to extend it, and we'll say OK. The next thing that I want to do is construct a plane at an angle. I'm gonna select my Z axis. I'm gonna rotate my plane 45 degrees. That was the position that I wanted for those small sort of um, the stems that are gonna position this. And then I'm gonna do another split face. So we're gonna to go to split face. We're gonna split that inside that we created and we're gonna use our 45 degree plane to do it. I'm gonna hide the construction for now, but I wanna use that last plane we created as a sketch plane. So we'll create a sketch on this. I'm going to use slice, which will temporarily give us a section view. And note that we have this and we have this edge. Now, these are important. We need that edge. That's going to be key here. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to project that edge. We can use P on the keyboard or we can come in and do project. Because we're sketching on the plane that was used to cut this, I don't need to worry about uh, the actual intersection. But we could have skipped that last split. And we could have used create, project, include, and intersect, and simply intersected with the inside face of that cylinder. Both options would have been perfectly fine. 
I like to explore using both just simply because sometimes one will work over the other and knowing that both are there is, is kind of important. Next, we're gonna use some lines. I'm gonna create a line just at a, a funky angle here and I'm gonna create this one kind of coming down. I'm gonna create a perpendicular constraint between these two. That means if I move one, they're gonna stay 90 degrees to each other. And then here's the trick. We're gonna create a tangency between this line and that arc here. And that is the point in which we are going to get the normal direction. So let's go ahead and pull this down. So we've got this, this arc that we cut. Now we did that with a split on the 45 degree plane. We needed the plane already. Again, we could have used project include and intersect, but the important bit here is now what we have is a normal reference. So let's finish this sketch and let's once again use move copy bodies. We're going to go point to point. We'll select that endpoint. We'll move it up here and then we'll use align. We're going to align this body. Again, I'm going to hold down control or command when I hover over the outside cylinder. Make sure that we're selecting that point and that's important because that point, it's going to allow it to pivot about. And then our second selection is our, our sketch line. So again, in this case, we didn't have an axis, but we had a sketch line. Something interesting that we can do here that we couldn't do in the other example. So let's go ahead and let's hide this body and let's hide this body. And let's create one more just to explore something else. And again, I'm just going to put it down here. We'll make this one a little bit larger. Now let's take a look at using a line with this reference. So when we hover over the cylinder, again, it allows us to move between the midpoint or the endpoints. When we hover over the end, we are able to snap and notice that the orientation of the icon is the same. A line allows us to do something interesting in, in the fact that we can select a face without a center point. So if you're doing this, make sure that you are actually selecting that point, it's gonna be important. Then now that we have this sketch line, notice if I select the end points that the orientation of the plane is not correct. But if I am selecting the line itself, I can hold down control or command and I can get the end position and the orientation that I'm looking for. Notice that it didn't position it on the center and that's because the from reference I used wasn't correct. It's always good for us in this case when we're trying to align an axis, hover over the cylindrical face, hold down control or command to lock its focus and then select that endpoint. We could flip it if we need to and then say okay. So. You can see between those two methods that when we have an axis, the axis itself does not actually give us a point, a true actual point that we can use. So in order to make that work, we had to use move copy to that projected point. Then we used a line based on the orientation of that point. So it just pivoted about it. If we're actually using the split method, we can use that line reference and that endpoint on the surface, and we can just use the align tool. We don't have to use move copy. We can solely use the line and we can get that same reference. Now, this one here is going to be normal to the surface. The same as this, uh, same as this one over here. It just simply depends on the references that you have available. This one was not in line with any predefined plane. We didn't know where the center point of the normal was like we did with this sketch. So we had to get creative and we had to split up the surface. One thing that you could do at this point is you could now figure out where the center of, of this reference is. So that last sketch that we used and you could create a cylindrical pattern. So we could pattern the body and we could pattern it around an axis. In this case, we could go about this and we could use things like press pull, we could adjust the size of all of these together, and then we could have four points that are normal to the surface at our specified location. And we could do the same thing over here, and we could simply pattern it around a specific point. But hopefully this gives you an idea of ways in which you could work with this complex curvature and geometry. I would strongly suggest that you do this once, you do a single instance, and then you use it to create things like a pattern. Like for instance, I didn't have to position all four of these. Once I understand the normal here, I can 
Um, as long as the curvature is consistent, I can just simply create a pattern about the center point of the gem or the stone that we're holding. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight on how to work with normal to um, arcs and curves and things like that. It's a tricky subject. There are a couple different ways to do it. This is one way that I wanted to talk about because it allows us to look at move copy and align as well as splitting faces, creating those normal reference axes and also creating the normal references from those split lines and sketches. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.